Okay, so um, so we've got to kind of take a, or we're going to take a little bit of a detour here, I guess. Um, the last topic I want to cover in this chapter is firewalls. Um, this is not really a complicated topic or anything, but it probably makes sense to take a break here and cover some of the networking background because this will make more sense and also the next two chapters of stuff on protocols will make more sense. So yeah, sort of take a little detour here. Okay, networking basics. Okay, now if you've already had a networking class, you're a networking expert, that's great. Um, you know, if you haven't had any networking, don't worry, there's more than enough here for what we do in this class. But even if you think you know everything, pay attention because a lot of people use different terms. You know, I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page, we're all thinking the same, speaking the same language. Uh, okay, so what is a network? Well, it's this big thing with the blue X's, right? Okay, that's a network. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so uh, it includes all kinds of stuff. It includes routers, servers, you know, your laptop computer, your desktop computer, your mobile phone, everything. Okay, everything, everything you know and love is connected to the network uh, in some way or another today. Oh, yeah, and here we go. We have some awesome animation in this uh, <laughs> appendix. So here you go. So you want to get your uh, information from one point to another. It passes through the network and gets to where it's supposed to go. Okay. Uh, now there's sort of two parts to the network. There's the network <coughs> edge and there's the network core. Okay, so what stuff is on the edge of the network? All the stuff you know and love. Okay, all the stuff you see every day, right? Your laptop, your desktop, your cell phone, all those things. That's the edge of the network. Okay. All right, now what about the core? What's the core of the network? What does that consist of? Router. router. It's this mesh of routers, this interconnected mesh of routers. What's the purpose of the core? It's to keep Cisco in business. I mean, without the core, they wouldn't have any business. So, okay, no, the point is that it's a way to uh, get packets really from point A to point B, right? So you're on the edge. You would just assume this whole core of the network was invisible. You don't have to worry about it at all. But it gets your packets from one point to another. OK, now there's a distinction here. You know, Classically, uh, a network was, uh, for telephones and things like that, a network is circuit switch. Okay, what does that mean, circuit switch? Well, I mean, think about the old-fashioned telephone switchboard, right? You actually had an operator there. You called up the operator. And what did the operator do? Connected a couple cables, <laughs> okay? And now, you know, Bob over here talking to Alice actually had a physical circuit connecting the two, okay? And so they could talk directly to each other. Okay, that's good uh, in a way uh, because what? What's good about that? Dedicated. It's dedicated, okay? The bandwidth that's available on that circuit is dedicated to Alice and Bob. That's great. They don't have to share it with anybody. What's uh, bad about circuit switch network? It's dedicated. <laughs> okay, nobody else can use it, right? I mean, think about it. It's wasteful, right? If you're sitting here talking on the phone, most of the time, unless you're my wife, most of the time you're not saying anything. You know, it's just quiet. Uh, and at dead time, somebody else could be using that bandwidth. It's just wasted. Okay, nobody is, is not available to anybody else. Okay, so people realized this, and they said, hey, that's wasteful, so let's come up with an alternative. Uh, and the alternative is a packet switch network. So we'll chop up the data, the actual data that needs to get through, into small discrete chunks, and then send them out sort of independent of each other, all right? So the advantage is, compared to the circuit switch, it's more efficient. Okay, we're making more efficient use of the bandwidth. What's the downside? There's no free lunch. What's the downside? Well, I mean, all this stuff you're saying is true, but it's, in general, it's more complex. You have a lot more complexity to deal with with a packet switch network than a circuit switch. You don't just have the operator plug in a couple of cables. Okay? You've got a lot more to deal with here. Uh, okay, so we're going to chop the uh, information up into small packets. We're not going to establish a dedicated circuit of any sort. Um, and the bottom line is we can, we can get 
a lot more efficiency. You know, we make a lot more efficient use of the bandwidth here. Okay, but the trade-off again is it's more complex. Okay, now uh, networking, if you take a networking class, I mean, networking is largely the study of protocols, right? All those things that end with P, HTTP, SMTP, FTP, right? Okay, that's what you do in a networking class for the most part. Um, now, what does it mean, a protocol? Protocol is just the rules you follow, okay? It's a specified and very excruciating level of detail. Why? Because computers are really stupid. Okay, you have to tell them everything. They have no common sense. Okay, you have to tell them exactly where each and every bit goes. Okay, so that's what you study in uh, networking classes. You now the details on um, most of the protocols and the other stuff you care about in the internet are spelled out in RFCs. So an RFC, what does that stand for again? Request for comments. Request for comments. Of course, they're not <coughs> requesting the comments. Uh, now an RFC is essentially an internet standard. But um, actually, most RFCs are not internet standards. <laughs> uh, and in fact, there's an RFC that tells you uh, how, an, how an RFC can become an internet standard, but that RFC itself is not an internet standard. I don't know, it just confuses the heck out of me. But anyway, think of them as internet standards. That's basically what they are. Now, there's lots of ways to look at protocols. Uh, just something to keep kind of in the back of your mind as we go through this. Uh, protocols can be either stateless or stateful. Okay, so stateless protocols, they don't remember anything. Okay, so they just do their thing, don't have to keep track of stuff. Stateful protocols have to remember something. Now, from a, so we're looking at this from a security angle. So which is more secure, stateless or stateful? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay, but there are problems related to state. Let's just leave it at that. We'll <coughs> see sort of examples from different angles here. Okay. Now, uh, you know, I guess the first day of your uh, networking class, you look at the protocol stack, right? Okay. Uh, so the uh, so-called OSI model has how many layers in the protocol stack? Seven. Seven layer model, right? But nobody cares about a couple of those, so let's just throw them out. Let's just look at five layers, okay? The ones that people actually care about. So the highest layer here, application layer, transport layer, down to network layer, link layer, and physical layer. Uh, we'll talk about four of these, uh, the top four. If you want to know about the physical layer, double E department's right over there. Okay, that's where you should be. Um, the thing to remember is application layer. This is the one you really deal with, okay? This is up here in user space. Uh, transport layer, network layer, those are part of the OS, so ordinarily you don't deal with those directly. Uh, and the link layer is in your uh, network card, okay, it's a network interface card, and it's really separate even from your OS, okay? so you don't really have any real control over that. Uh, what's the point of having this protocol stack? Why do we do this? Um, maybe, okay, we can understand it better, uh, but from a practical point of view, who cares if you understand it, if it works? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of, okay, it's kind of like when you write Java code and you want to encapsulate something, you know, and do this uh, thing over here, and just look at the input and the output, and then you don't really care about the details of how it's implemented, right? You just use it, and that's kind of the idea here. You can have these different layers and this network layer, for example, will rely on the link layer. The link layer has to provide certain services to the network layer, but it doesn't, the network layer doesn't have to care how the link layer provides those. So it could rewrite the entire link layer and do it completely different as long as at the end it provided the same service to the network layer. So we can sort of you know, split things up and it keeps it simple, uh, simpler. <laughs> I wouldn't say networking is simple. It keeps it, makes it a little bit simpler to deal with. Although when you first take a networking class, you say this is anything but simple. Who came up with this? But you know, in the end, it really does make things so that simpler. Uh, okay, so we're gonna look at, uh, we're just gonna work our way down the protocol stack here, just looking at a few uh, protocols at each uh, uh, layer. Um, and just I guess as a preview here, the application layer, HTTP, FTP, SMTP, and so on are examples of uh, application layer protocols. 
transport layer, two that we'll look at are TCP and UDP, of course. At the network layer, we'll look at IP. Now, there are also routing protocols, you know, OSPF, BGP, uh, RIP, and those things are uh, protocols, but we, we won't really look at those. They're not really uh, relevant to what we want to talk about. Uh, and at the link layer, uh, Ethernet and things like that uh, uh, are, are examples of protocols. You know, this is one, if you take a networking class, you'll spend a lot of time talking about Ethernet. It's very interesting, but we won't say much about that because it just doesn't quite fit into what we're doing here. Okay, so here's the idea. So the host, uh, you know, from the host perspective, you would really like the network just to be transparent, right? You just create your data, you send it off, it gets to the other guy. You don't want to have to worry about the details. So you really live up here at the application layer, right? And you create your data, pass it off to the application layer, and somehow the magic happens. He gets to the other guy, he reads it off at the application layer. Okay, that's what you want to have happen. But what's happening in between? Ready for this? Mm -hmm. Pay close attention. <laughs> okay, the data actually starts up here, gets passed down the protocol stack, okay, and then at each router on its way, you know, it's down here at the physical layer, right? This is actually passing over the wire. As it arrives at the router, the router has to process it up to the network layer, because that's where all the routing information lives. And each router does that, and then pushes it back down and sends it on its way. Okay, and when it gets to the other end, its ultimate destination, it gets processed all the way up to the application layer, and magically the data gets through. So you're able to communicate. Okay. Uh, we better see that again. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> You don't know how many hours went into this. <laughs> okay. Um, encapsulation. So we, the data starts at the application layer, gets pushed down the protocol stack. At each step along the way, some additional information gets added, typically in the form of a header. Okay, so, so this points out there is some overhead to doing this layering, right? Each layer adds a little bit of information. So it better give us some benefit in you know, simplifying things. But, this is sort of the overhead, I guess. So the application layer adds some information, transport layer adds a little information on top of that, and so on and so forth. Okay, so there we go. All right, got that. So it's important to remember that applications sort of way here on the inside, which kind of seems a little backwards when you maybe first see it 